Hello there everyone, how you doing today? I hope you're all well. Today we're going into r slash traumatize them back, where people either get annoyed or inconvenienced by some sort of Karen, and well, the Karens get their comeuppance and then some. <laughs> If you enjoy, like the video, leave a comment down below, and I'll leave the rest of it up to you. Now, without further ado, let's get started. I just witnessed a massacre. Supermarket aisle earlier this evening, a 20-something man carrying a baby in a sling is trying to shop in peace, only to be accosted by an older woman. Making eye contact with him and then me, she ra loudly proclaims, I love to see a man doing the babysitting. Are you giving mummy a break? To which he replies, I am her mum. I just haven't had a chance to look after myself much with the newborn. Clearly dying inside, the woman sputters, backwards apologizing, disappearing into the corner. He then casually says to me, I'm her dad, really. I just don't really like it when they call it babysitting. It was legendary. Perhaps the greatest thing I've seen in real life. I laughed so hard, especially when I rounded the corner and realized she'd heard him, dumped her trolley, and run out of the shop. Dads of Reddit, next time someone calls taking care of your child babysitting, follow his example. They will never do it again, will they? <laughs> Karen thought men should not be at Disney without children, so my brother told her why his kid isn't there. My, uh, female 28 grew up working class, with many years of childhood being beneath the poverty line. My parents uh, always met our needs and tried to minimize the impact on our upbringings. Both of my parents are extremely into Disney films, so my brother Eric and I made a goal of ours to take them on a Disney cruise as a thank you for the sacrifices they have made, going hungry so that we could eat enough and so on. When we had our own money, we surprised them with it this year. My wife and I are child-free and my brother Eric lost his daughter to SIDS two years ago. So this trip was just us five adults. Eric is bisexual, paints his nails, and has the British version of the gay voice. Karen, a mid-30s American woman in the cabin next to Eric's, took issue with him. She saw him leaving the cabin on his own as she was going to her cabin with her children. She shooed her kids back to the cabin before asking Eric what he was doing there. He replied that he was on holiday with his parents. She blocked his path and accused him of having on my young children. Why else would someone like you be here? Eric told Karen that he's here with his family for a holiday, and that he'd never look a child in that way. But she shouted that he's obviously perverted and that he shouldn't be here if he doesn't have children. Eric then shouted back, I would have bought my daughter, but the church was reluctant to exhume her coffin for a Disney trip. Karen was stunned into silence for a moment before huffing and going back to her cabin. First of all, I am so sorry for your family's loss of the baby. It is a profound loss felt by all, but especially the parents. Your brother is a badass with the response. Let him know he's still an amazing human, and with that response alone, he would have been an amazing father had his baby lived on. That's what I want to say. Anyway, on to the next story. Nurse said I was squeamish because I hadn't had children yet. I traumatized her by telling her about the illegal medicine testing I endured as a child. This happened a couple weeks ago. My fertility doctor ordered some blood tests for me, and I went to my local healthcare clinic to get them done. I have, I can't pronounce that, but it's a fear of needles, which I disclosed to the nurse who would be taking my blood. I always need to warn them because I can handle myself okay for around 10 minutes or so, but if the blood draw takes too long, I'm likely to vomit and or faint. 
I once, very embarrassingly, threw up on the nurse's shoes. The nurse looks at me like they don't believe me and asks if I have children. I say no, keep in mind that the labels for my blood tests have the word INFERTILITY in big bold letters, but whatever. The nurse goes on about how I won't be this squeamish once I have kids. I'm pretty pissed off at this point, as I can already feel a bit woozy. So I say very coldly, I didn't used to be squeamish about needles as a kid, but the doctors in my home country volunteered me for medical testing and trainings. My parents got paid while I was used as a human pincushion for medical trainees. I specifically remember the day they taught students how to draw blood from my neck. The nurse turned white and proceeded to wordlessly draw the blood. Because they took so long, I ended up throwing up, which they had to clean up. Maybe next time they'll learn to listen to their patient. I dunno, I, just a thought. I am appalled that she's going on about having children when your chart's specified infernal. Like, that's just holy poo. What's wrong with that lady? Oh my god. On to the next story. Karen said, boys will be boys. So I return the favor. More than 20 years ago, when me and my sisters were still in elementary, our mom took us to a shopping mall for clothes and groceries. Major supermarket was attached to the mall. After everything was over, we stopped by the bookstore where us kids picked whatever books we wanted while she was picking educational books for the both of us. The bookstore was also selling some physical discs for various softwares, including games. While both of us were looking into games we wanted, a little boy of our age came up next to us, opened up one of our discs, and poked my sister in the eye. My sister immediately started to cry her eyes out, and my mom rushed over to see what was happening. She scolded the little boy after hearing what happened, to which he got upset and went to grab his Karen of a mother. Karen comes over and demands to know who yelled at my baby boy. The two ladies begin to get into a shouting match. My mom argued the kid had no reason to hurt my sister like that and should be taught better. Karen argued, boys will be boys and that he doesn't know any better. She asked my mom, why are you overreacting? I decided enough was enough. I did a frontal kick on the kid as hard as I can, making him fall onto his fat butt. I saw there was a nice footprint imprinted onto his shirt. He began to let out the most annoying cry I have ever heard. The Karen quickly rushed over to her little turd of a son and began shouting at me. I looked at her in the eye and said, Boys will be boys. Why are you overreacting? She tried to argue more, but her friend, uh, sister, held her back and ushered her out of the store. We went to get burgers and fries afterwards, but my mom lectured me about how violence isn't the answer. Me being a little sprouty elementary kid did not care and rode that train for weeks. <laughs> Oh, that's a wonderful story, OP. I hope you kicked him as hard as you could. I salute you. I don't care what your mom says. Every once in a while, violence is the answer. Actually, no. Violence is the question. And the answer is yes. My friend is dying, Karen. I just came across this sub, and it seems like the perfect place to rant about an incident that still makes my blood boil to this day. Back in high school, my friend group included this guy who had a terminal illness. He was at the point where his doctors were shocked he was still alive. Aside from being skinny and a bit pale, he looked like any other average teenager. He had his good days and his bad days, but even on his good days, he would tire out easily. He didn't talk much about his illness and tried to be normal like everyone else. For example, he would talk about college he wanted to attend, what career he wanted. We respected that and never bought up his illness. He had a placard, so we would always park in handicapped spots. As you can imagine, we often got dirty looks when a bunch of seemingly healthy teenagers piled out of the car. 
our friend ignored the looks, so we never said anything to these judgmental people. One weekend, we all decided to go to the amusement park. After an hour or so, he started getting tired, so we got him one of those loner wheelchairs. Like the teenagers we were, we took turns doing stuff like pushing him really fast and doing wheelies, but we were careful not to bother anyone else. I remember him laughing his ass off. That is, until a Karen shouted at us from, like, 30 feet away. You know you're keeping that wheelchair from someone who might actually need it, don't you? I looked at my friend, and his smile instantly disappeared. I was done. Effing done. So I marched over to her, knowing exactly what I was going to say. After biting my tongue so many times, I didn't raise my voice so my friend wouldn't overhear what I said. I'm so sorry, ma'am, but I'm sure you'll be happy to know that my friend has a terminal illness, and his doctors say he could die any moment now, so someone else will be able to use that wheelchair very soon. She got all red in the face and said, Well, how was I supposed to know that? And I replied, You weren't supposed to know that. Because it's none of your effing business. So thank you for reminding my friend he's dying when he was having so much fun. I turned around and walked back to my friends. He made it another two years after that. Jay, I still miss you, bro. I admire that you talked so we couldn't hear you explaining, while still making her feel embarrassed to all hell. It takes a lot of strength to not yell at a Karen. You and your friend group were saints, putting happiness in his soul. He's surely watching over you all, assuming afterlifes exist and all that, but I'm not the one to say any of that. So anyway, on to the next story. I didn't look pretty enough four hours after my mom died. This happened a really long time ago, but I have never seen anyone run away from a situation quite so quickly, and sometimes I do wonder what the guy thought, or if he learned his lesson. So my mom had been terminal and in hospice care in our home. We knew his time was limited, however, when I'm upset, the first thing I go to hell is my sleep schedule. I had slept two hours that night and hadn't been getting much more sleep than that for the last few weeks preceding this. But she ended up passing slightly before four in the morning that this took place. So after she passed, I decided I need cat feed to get through this day. So when the nearest gas station opened up at 8 a.m., I headed over there for some energy drinks. I likely did look like a bit of a mess. It's easy to tell when I'm tired, and I was wearing college merch that was much bigger than my usual size. I get out of my car and start shuffling through my clothes. I couldn't remember which gigantic pocket I put my wallet in. While I did that, a man pulls up to a pump in a very shiny car. I don't remember what he looked like beyond that he looked like he was a very well put together game show host. This man turns to me, he was like 20 or so feet away, and says loudly, It's a shame someone so pretty can't improve everyone's day with a smile. And I burst out crying, ugly crying, the sobbing mouth thing and shaking. Just went from standing there, hoping I hadn't left my wallet at home, to bawling in a mostly empty parking lot. I did manage to yell something like, Ah, oh, I'm so sorry I'm not fucking pretty enough for you when my mom died four hours ago. Dude turned on his heels and left. Didn't pump gas, didn't go inside for coffee, didn't apologize either. Just got in his car and left. I was saved from standing in the parking lot sobbing by a woman who I think was jogging and heard what the men and I said to each other and the employee of the gas station who were very kind. Edit. Some people seem to be confusing things, calling, the b calling him... Thinking him calling me pretty was a compliment, but really, I don't look great. I was wearing a hoodie that literally went past my knees and sweatpants stuffed into duck boots. I had dark circles bad enough that someone asked me if a snowball hit me in the face a couple days after this. They thought I had two black eyes. My very long hair was piled on top of my head, and I hadn't been brushed properly. I also had big red blotches on my face when I cry or am cold. Considering it was January, I definitely had a blotchy face even if it wasn't from crying earlier. 
Best case scenario, he was complimenting me first to sandwich critique. Worst case scenario, he was being actively passive-aggressive about how I looked. I don't think he woke up that morning and twirled a mustache wanting to make a stranger cry. I think he did an awkward thing that he shouldn't have. <coughs> Excuse me. Don't tell woman to smile. Seriously. And got embarrassed. Something that's probably happened to literally every person who's commented or liked this. Oh my heavens, I know it was a long time ago, but I can feel the hurt from here. Virtual parent hugs to that long ago hurting young woman. <sighs> That's what somebody in the comments says. I'm not actually a parent. I never intend on being a parent. Being a parent's way too stressful. Anyways, that's the end of today's video. Thank you all for watching. I will see you all next time. Remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below, and check out my gaming channel, Count Julius Gaming, or I'm going to have to steal your kneecaps. Okay, bye.